Good morning, everybody. I'm New Center Rain Sack Lanchard, and this is Political Brew. I'm joined once again by Republican analyst Ray Richardson and Ethan Strimling. Thanks for staying with us. Good, Good to see you guys. Well, we still have a ways to go, but the 2024 presidential race is really starting to take shape. I'm Ron DeSantis, and I'm running for president to lead our great American comeback. This week, Florida governor and Trump rival Republican Ron DeSantis officially announced his run. He did it in a live stream with Twitter CEO Elon Musk. There were some technical difficulties, but his campaign is officially up and running. Ethan, I want to start with you. Polling puts him behind former President Donald Trump. Is he likely to take away from his supporters? From Trump supporters? No. He's going to lose. There's no doubt about it. But, it, you know, and it was a monumentally uh, flawed rollout. It was a terrible rollout, tons of technical problems. The messaging was off. But, you know, the, the, how bad the rollout was doesn't really matter. What matters is how bad his policies is. This is a guy who's banning books in Florida, banning the teaching of African-American history in schools. You can't even say the word gay in a classroom down there. He's banned abortion from after six weeks. He's killing jobs down there as he fights with Disney over this social, you know, he, he's basically trying to get into American lives in a way that we haven't seen in decades, unfortunately. So while he did a terrible rollout, I want to be very clear, what's really bad about this guy is his policies. The fact that Donald Trump and he are the top two Republican nominees, boy, that's kind of scary. That tells you all you need to know about the GOP these days. Ray, why are we laughing? Well, I like Ron DeSantis. I, I like the fact that he stands up for what he believes. And I think the people of Florida have spoken very loudly about those ideas. They reelected him with a million and a half vote margin. Most of my family, my wife's family, are still there. The economy is really doing great. And I think people like the strong stand against age inappropriate material in school. We certainly have seen these battles going on in Maine. We don't have the same kind of governor here who speaks out against it, but he did. And I like that. Yeah, it, people don't like it at all. His policies across America, and especially around choice, around abortion, that he has signed into law a ban on abortion at six weeks. I mean, most people don't even know they're pregnant at that point. Uh, these kind of extreme policies, this is not what Americans want. I, I do think, though, that Donald Trump is going to win. Donald Trump is incredibly strong within the Republican Party, as terrifying as that is. And I expect it doesn't really matter what seems to happen. They're going to love him no matter what. He can be indicted. He can be, you know, found guilty in a civil trial of sexually abusing and defaming a woman. No matter what it is, his supporters seem to stay with him, unfortunately. And I think that will stay uh, as is. And, you know, look, I'm a big supporter of Trump's policies. I certainly was a big supporter of him. I'll vote for any Republican over the tick on the ticket over uh, Joe Biden. I think if the Democrats were smart, they would nominate uh, RFK Jr. He's at least speaking common sense. <laughs> Now to a headline a lot of parents and college grads care about. This week, the House passed a bill to block President Joe Biden's student loan forgiveness plan. In fact, Maine's representatives were split on that vote. Congressman Jared Golden, one of just two Democrats to vote for the Republican legislation. Shelley Pingree voted against it. Ethan, obviously, this is still all tied up in the courts. Why does someone like Golden make this kind of move right now? Yeah, really bad move on his part. Uh, look. Uh, people are struggling, especially in Maine. A lot of people have to get student loans in order to be able to afford school. I had to get student loans to be able to afford school. It, it's just those costs are out of control, and it's creating this debt on a whole generation of Americans that's uh, holding them back from being able to achieve their potential and from being able to contribute to an America in a way that we need them to. So the Biden administration was very smart to put this plan in place. He's never going to allow them. He will veto anything that comes out that deals with this program. So this, like before, this was pure politics on the part of uh, Republicans. Very disappointing that Representative Golden would have fallen into that trap and voted with them, but uh, it's not going anywhere, thankfully. Right. Well, I totally disagree. I think, first of all, I think the courts are going to strike it down. But secondly, and I've said this forever, all this does is take away the focus on why education costs so much. These people freely entered into these agreements. Now, I was lucky. My parents paid for my education, but they freely entered into this agreement. What about somebody with cancer? Why don't we get rid of their debt? They didn't want cancer or somebody that has some sort of medical issue. But this is the cause du jour of the moment because it's pure politics on the Biden administration. And it's keeping us from talking about why we're paying professors $400,000 and it costs 100 grand to go to school. It's ridiculous. But this is politics again. And I agree with Ethan, it is politics, but on the Democratic side. 
Yeah, look at it. Just real quick, I'd love to pay for some of these cancer bills. Let's get universal single panel health care. That will solve that problem. But just because we haven't solved that problem doesn't mean you don't deal with this one. And student debt is a huge issue. Yeah, I don't agree. All right, don't fine. agree at all. Free, free, freely got into that deal. Finally, winners and losers. Ray, let's start with you. Well, I don't have any losers, but I do have winners. And the winners are the American people because we live in a country that is so wonderful that brave men and women are willing to lay down their life and die for our freedom and keep us strong and safe and free. So we are the winners. Ethan? A nice tribute to Memorial Day. Thank you for doing that. Um, yeah, my winners this week actually are one of your media partners, the Portland Press Herald. They've been running a series about immigrants and about the impact that immigrants have in Maine. And there's so much xenophobia out there right now, the struggles that they go through. And I'm so proud that the Press Herald is really trying to tell those stories. So thank them for that. The loser of the week is uh, uh, we heard from them earlier, the Chamber of Commerce coming out against uh, workers being able to take care of their parents, workers being able to take care of their kids when they just have a baby. So for me, the loser of the week is the business community coming out against paid family leave. All right, Ray Ethan, thanks so much for being here. And that's going to do it for this week's Political Brew. We'll leave you on a somber note. Mal Leary, known as the Dean of the State House Press Corps, passed away last weekend. He likely last heard his voice on the radio for Maine Public. Mal was a fixture in Augusta who covered every major political issue in the state over the last four decades. A journalist through and through. He was 72 years old.